top 10 sewing makes of the year based on the scale of happiness and one flop aka fail coming up for you to see. Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and this specific video is one I've been really really looking forward to filming for you. I've given it a bit of thought but not that much because I don't want my choices to be too rational. I'm not taking into account how many times I've worn them because 2020 was a very strange year. I have not worn all the makes I have made for myself more than once or twice maybe because I haven't been out of the house maybe a few times counted with my hand and yeah it's just been very very different but I want to rate what those patterns made me feel when I was sewing them, what those projects meant. I'm basically rating it on a scale of happiness, which is something that is not objective at all. It's very subjective to me, to my feelings. I made a list of 10 pro... Uh oh, it's raining. Okay. Um, I'll have to change where I am. <laughs> okay, before I leave this place, I wanted to show you that orchid. That's why I wanted to film here. I came out and it was sunny and it just started getting terrible in a second. Tropical weather for you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I had to come back into my sewing room to film the rest of the video. I really wanted to be out there. It feels always super amazing to be surrounded by the greenery out there, that beautiful orchid. The weather just took a turn in a second, which is what's happening pretty much daily. I hope you can't hear the wind and everything going on out there because it is pretty loud. There is an epic storm out there right now. But we are back to talk about my favorite makes of 2020. I know a lot of us have been struggling with weird things happening, lots of restrictions to our normal liberties as such, you know, not being able to do all the things that we want to do. So as many of you, I'm just scrambling around trying to find happiness in everyday life at home. And a huge part of that is sewing for me. You know, I absolutely love sewing. It's just one of the things that I love doing the most. <laughs> I think about it when I'm sleeping. Anytime I'm wondering, it's that daydreaming. My, my husband and son laugh at me. They say, what do you think about? And they like go like this because I'm just looking at the roof. What that means is in my head, I'm trying to figure out how to finish something or I'm just always connected to this beautiful art of sewing. So in this year, I really wanted to make myself feel happy with this. I've only chosen them based on how happy I felt while choosing the fabric, pairing the patterns, sewing them, trying it on, that sort of thing. Just how much happiness I felt. As I mentioned, it's very subjective, but there has to be one way that we choose things and I can feel it in my soul. Very hard to make the choice because there's so many things that I like sewing. I will mention them in no particular order. Trying to make them into a type of rank just doesn't feel right for me because I really just love them all, the ones that I've chosen. The first one I'll mention is the Rhapsody dress that I made in a rayon spandex, a stripey fabric. I was getting ready to make the Rhapsody dress to promote it after it was redrafted and the sizing update, everything. And you know, this is designed for woven fabrics, this dress. It's not designed for knit fabrics, but I had always had that thought at the back of my mind. Why not make it in something super drapey like rayon spandex? I would also make it in ITY. I really just love the features of the yoke, the little gathers here on the shoulders, and it's something that I've always enjoyed from this pattern, that little V-neckline with the binding. It's a pattern I've repeated multiple times. I've made it in every single way possible, and I just wanted to make it in a knit. So the whole process of making up my mind to do it, choosing the fabric, trying to match the stripes, Figuring out how to finish that neckline really neatly with a v-neck binding that is neat, that is not woven, was really, really fun for me. I didn't finish it in the way that you do with the woven version of the, of the pattern. It had to be done in a different way to avoid bulk. And I have that little v there matching the stripe, everything it was really fiddly. But the satisfaction of having a really comfortable dress, stretchy materials, special for this weird year that we've just had, um, just being around the house in something nice and stretchy and soft is a bonus and this is why this specific make made it into my list. I also love the pattern of course but this specific project um, making something in a neat that's not supposed to be <laughs> makes it to the list. It was really fun and I was just happy throughout the whole process. The other make I'll mention is the Celeste dress from Each to Stitch. 
I love this pattern so much. I made the official tester version, which does not stray from the original design. I made it in a rayon that looks like linen and I absolutely love that. I really did like it, but the version I made as a hack Oh my gosh, I was humming and singing the whole afternoon while I was thinking that up. I made it in a lightweight rayon. It's not a fabric that is amazing for these types of more structured bodices, but I made it work with a lot of interfacing. But the best thing was thinking up this two-tiered gathered hack on the center front. And it was something that was a bit spontaneous when I couldn't get my central panel to fit into my fabric but I could get it to fit if I got the two pieces from different areas of the fabric. And just thinking up that gave me a lot of happiness. Sometimes these hacks and creative things come from the fact that I don't have enough fabric to just make it in the regular way. Because my idea for the second version was to make it all the same. The only difference was that it was going to be sleeveless, which is not part of the original design. But the fact that I did make it sleeveless, which is something I wanted to do, and add that two-tiered hack on the front, plus the combination of the style and the fabric and the way it feels on, totally makes it into my happy list of 2020. Super nice project, I really enjoyed that. And I know that if I make this pattern again, in a simplified way, in a knit, I will also be super happy doing that and I really, really, really want to simplify this pattern and make it during the year in something something nice and light, like a rail spandex or an ITY would be nice. So I have everything thought out how I'm gonna do it in a knit and just make it simple, just simplify the whole process. Because 99% of the times when you wanna make a huge change like that of making something in a knit that's not supposed to be, you have to adapt some techniques just to make it work. So I've already been thinking about that and I've got it figured out. The other project that made me insanely happy and I know a lot of you liked this blouse when I showed it was the Norma blouse from Fiber Mood. It's a really simple blouse that has a button down feature, wide sleeves on the hems that are gathered into a cuff, a V neckline. It's, it's quite a basic type of blouse for wovens and I participated in a challenge where you had to hack it. So I made it simple by just making the front and the back on the fold. I didn't put those sleeves into the cuff, I just left them because it was all about the fabric. The fabric is so, so beautiful. It's so soft to touch, it's such a fun. I was hoarding it because it was so beautiful, I didn't know what to do with it. Large scale print, that's why I knew that I had to make something relatively simple to not cut up those huge designs there. But that tone of pink, just and the way that feels on the body is so soft, so silky. So yeah, I came up with a hack to add a little ruffle on the back. I added an extra seam at the height of my waist. And when I wear it, it just flows, it follows me around. I have to wear something underneath because it is sheer. But it, it was so, so, so nice to sew that, try it on, just see the vision in my head come to life. And paired with that beautiful fabric, yeah, happy list for sure. For my birthday back in February last year, I turned 41 and I bought myself a new pattern that day as a gift for myself. <laughs> You know, I do those things. And I bought the talent dress from Each to Stitch. Now, I usually test all the patterns. Um, I would say I like 90% of the styles, so I do test them. And that particular time, I just totally did not see that testing call come through my Facebook notifications. Then I realized it came around the time when my son's birthday had been a few days before. And I was absolutely gutted to not have tested that. <laughs> That dress, it's so beautiful. As soon as it was released, I think it was on my birthday actually on the same day I got it. And I paired it to the most beautiful ITY I had purchased on that same day in a shopping spree that my hus husband treated me to. He does that every year. He takes me to a big shop and tells me to buy everything I want. It's amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew I loved that print. It had red, I had black, it had a lovely print and I could just see it in my head. I finished the neckline and the armholes with a different jersey that looks like leather. I did the binding technique, super pretty. Lowered that scoop neckline, made it sleeveless. And you know, other than this dress making me extremely happy when I bought the pattern, when I paired it to the fabric, when I tried it on, I've literally been wearing it, I would say at least once a week for the whole year. It's so comfortable. Every time I put it on, I feel amazing. So yeah, it, I love it. It's got princess seams. And this one being a neat dress has a standard bust and a full bust option. 
and it's just so so pretty it doesn't take up much fabric which is a plus as well and I did make this one in a green and black rayon spandex it's exactly the same but I like this one best because of the print the print is everything the colors I apologize if you can hear the storm out there. It is so loud. I just filmed the tad so you can see. It is ridiculous. I'm really hoping my power and internet doesn't cut off like it did before Christmas because that was not good. <laughs> Another project that made it to my happy list of 2020 is the Adeline Wrap Top and Dress from Forget Me Not Patterns. This was a pattern I sold as a full sew along for Patreon and I basically had the idea that month to sew a wrap style something so I had three patterns of wrap styles different brands different indie companies and this one won the votes and I was so glad because it's so unique and I can see why the ladies on the orchid tea would vote for this because it's very unique you don't see a style like this anywhere else at least I have not and it's all about those diagonal pleats on the front and all those pleats at the back that finish in a bodice seam and then they have this diagonal effect the tie on the side the crisscross is really modest like this is a wrap you can see where this crosses is nice and high i don't have to worry about pins or anything i'm always looking for styles like that and this one was like that i don't need a pin or anything and i'll be like concerned about showing my bra and things like that and there's also these little pleats on the sleeves here it's so so unique so beautiful and then paired with that tensile twill fabric is amazing unfortunately i haven't had the opportunity to wear this out <laughs> i just haven't and i'm really really hoping for the day when i can put this on and go outside with it but it still made me extremely happy and that's why it makes it to the list the next one is a sicily slip dress from patterns by mason now this is a pattern that became a bit popular but everyone was making the style that had the straps the really thin spaghetti straps i like that style because it has a really nice draped cow neckline and i like the way that the pattern finishes the neckline um, it's a little bit different for the both views the strappy version has a facing and I chose the wide strap one of course anything that uses tiny tiny spaghetti straps is just not practical for me I always wear a bra that has a chunky wide strap and it is necessary to hold up the bus volume you know I don't have a small cup size it's not too big either but it's still it is a chunky strap and so I cannot wear strapless bras I would just feel very uncomfortable with those spaghetti straps and whenever I've made camis that do that, I do widen the straps. But with this one being cut on the bias, the whole thing, I didn't want to be manipulating this and just playing with that at all. So I don't think it's a style I would make, but I'm glad the pattern had the other option with the thick straps here, with just a normal sleeveless armhole actually. I'd made one in a crepe that wasn't one of my top favorites. And I thought I'd measured, I thought I'd added enough length extra because the original dress looks like a mini mini dress <laughs> i can't do that but i did it add enough and i ended up with a really short dress so that was a little bit disappointing but i knew i wanted to make the classic elegant black dress so i chose my rayon twill i love that fabric because it's matte it's it doesn't shine it's not shiny and being cut on the bias just hugs your curves it drapes beautifully it's just the most beautiful elegant dress and you know i try on things while i'm sewing so when i tried it on and looked at myself i felt amazing it's just so so beautiful the way that anything cut on the bias hangs on you and this dress is entirely on the bias the whole thing <laughs> it's just so beautiful and i felt super happy to make it i haven't worn it yet i haven't worn it out but i still loved it i still loved making it <laughs> and it's just one of my favorites for the year the vivace dolman from love notions also makes it to my favorites list and now I've made this one five times this year. It's been insane. It's a style that I really enjoy. I love that crossover collar with that V shape in the front. It's really, really nice to sew. It is a little bit more of an involved technique, but not that much. You just need a little bit of precision. And I've made them in knits. I've made them in wovens because the pattern includes both options, you know, separate pattern pieces. But there's one that I enjoyed the most, and it was one I made in a really light crepe woven zero stretch and i decided to eliminate that front pleat it was basically me trying to simplify this pattern by eliminating that center front offset pleat it just makes it so much easier to sew in this collar 
Also, I chose a cotton for that collar, so a very nice light structured fabric is very easy to work with compared to working with the same fabric as the main body of the Vivace had. And I'd done that before with a chiffon version I made. I'd made the collar, everything in chiffon, and it just made it so lengthy, you know, just difficult fabrics to work with, but not cotton. So I really enjoyed the experience. I had that vision of the print with the contrast black neckline. I think it just highlights that beauty of that neckline. Feels amazing on. It was just very simple. I just hemmed the sleeves. I didn't add a cuff. And yeah, it's just a really easy like woven tee that you can throw on. Nice, loose, easy to wear, easy to fit. And I really enjoyed it. The print of that fabric is super pretty. It's all tropical, full of colors. Love it. Another project I enjoyed immensely, and this is more towards the end of the year in November, is the Alana dress from Sinclair Patterns. Now, I have started sewing some Sinclair Patterns just in the past year, and I don't know why I hadn't sewn them before, but I'm very hooked because of the height files. So, you know, the petite, regular, and tall files, it does really make a difference to the fitting. Maybe not that much if you're a regular height, but for someone that's petite or for someone that's tall, makes a huge difference because you don't have to be doing length adjustments on your patterns using the shorten and lengthen lines, cutting, adding. That's just a process I go through with so many of the patterns I sew because I am a bit taller than the standard height. I am five foot eight. So I see myself adding length to everything. And I love the design of this dress. Princess seams are always beautiful and these ones come from the shoulders. I love that. And those pockets, look, you never see me sewing pockets on dresses and stuff, but there are some pockets that are very pretty, like these. They don't add bulk to the hips, they are easy to sew, and they make part of the design, actually, if you did that contrast panel on the side. So it goes in at the waist, and then you have that slanted shape there with the contrast colors of the fabric. So pretty, so pretty. And pairing the fabrics together, just doing the whole thing was very, very fun for me, trying it on, feeling amazing. And yeah, it was just a very happy dress for me. And I want to make more of those. I think everyone that makes a dress in that style will look amazing. It's just a style that will suit everyone. And I felt amazing doing that. I made all the patterns from the So Beautiful book by Kenneth Wong. She is the designer at Each to Stitch. And the last pattern in the book and the last video I made from that series was the Orosi top and dress. I did make a dress with an ITY print, that's fine, it's very beautiful as well. <laughs> but one of the versions in that pattern has a scarf collar V neckline. So pretty, so pretty, I've never seen a design like that in a, in a neat pattern. It's so, so beautiful. Not hard to sew, I show you how to do that in my video about that. But just putting that together with a basic black top, I had a scrap left of a purple knit that I used to make that scarf collar with. And it's so, so pretty. I mean, I can imagine this being perfect for winter weather, although I don't have winter weather, and that's why I made it in lightweight knits. If you made this in like a sweater knit and had that scarf like that, it wouldn't move. Like it's, you wouldn't have to use a real scarf. But it's the thing that is just so pretty. It's so pretty, so fun to sew. And I think it was one of the best patterns in that book, in my opinion, at least for what I like. I like them all, but that's the one that made me the happiest to make, to sew, to wear, to share with you, all of that. And I know a lot of you liked it too, because you did comment on my video saying that you love that scarf collar and yeah, very, very nice. The last make into this happy list was actually the last thing I sewed in 2020. I was sewing this, I believe, the 29th of December, something like that, or the 28th. And it's a Nioka dress from Sinclair Patterns. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing Nioka correctly or if it's Nioka, I'm not sure. But it's very beautiful <laughs> crossover bodice. And I did make one in stripes that I also like. No drama there, I like that one. But the dress, the dress is just everything. I had bought that neat during the year online hoping that it was be as beautiful as I could see it in the photos of the website I bought it in. And when I got it, it just, yeah, I can't tell you what experience happens in my head when I get pretty fabric in the mail, because up to 2019, I had been buying fabric in person. I go to shops, I feel the stuff, I have all that experience with all my senses. 
love that and this year has been very different i've taken a few gambles with buying online i've had a few that didn't turn out as i expected in the colors in things like that and with this one specifically i was really hoping it was as pretty as it was in the photo and i found even more pretty and i knew it had to be something special so i just took care to match the print on that center front seam of the bodice I didn't want to chop up any of those roses, took care to not have one of those roses ending up at the height of my bust. <laughs> so beautiful, that dress just made me feel amazing. I said it in my video, like a million dollars. And it's a style I want to make again, for sure. It's so nice. All the other photos I've seen of other people making this dress online, that everyone looks amazing. It's so, so pretty. <laughs> and it was a great project to finish the year. Usually the end of the month for me, every single month is a bit stressful. I'm feeling a little bit tired. And that was just a big pick me up, filled me with endorphins, self-love, all those things. And it's amazing that a garment can do that for you. And I'm not trying to be vain or anything, but some of us are really sensitive to the way that we feel with clothes that we wear, and I am like that. So having a project that made me feel so good about myself was amazing. So those were my 10 favorite makes in no particular order. I love them all, very enjoyable. They all gave me immense amounts of happiness in 2020 that was very needed. And I have one fail actually to share, one flop as I call them, <laughs> to give them a different name. This was Simplicity 1806. It's an older pattern that is out of print, but I was sent this pattern, the printed pattern um, by a friend. And I really love the style, the view that I've chosen here. And there are several views in the pattern. But what mostly attracted me to this view was the type of hem that ends in a point in the center and that sort of cow neckline. And when you see this on the envelope, that fabric drapes beautifully. And I thought, you know, that must be cut on the bias. Then when I see the actual pattern pieces, that piece was cut on the straight of grain. And when I sewed it onto the blouse, it looked terrible it looked horrific it just did not drape it was like all weird and folding in different ways and i'm working with really really drapey crepe fabric bubble crepe it drapes amazingly um, but that thing was unwearable for me it was so ugly so i took out that cow neckline and i ended up with a very wide sort of neckline that just falls and hangs differently it just gapes the straps ended up being so wide here, I would have to pull my bra strap like almost to the end of my shoulder so that it's not seen. And as a lot of you suggested in that video, I could sew something on the inside to keep the bra strap there. But my bra straps naturally will come to the center of my shoulder and that would just bring this in. And then this would just gape in the center and it's not pretty, it just looked really ugly. So. Uh, it's really unfortunate because I really did like the design, I really loved it, the way it has these little seams coming from the center, the hem, it's just a pretty design, it's got a little pleat on the back, but that neckline let me down and I didn't have enough fabric left over for me to be able to cut this cow neckline on the bias, like I know it would have fallen better and draped better and all that stuff. So I did learn a lot with that project. <laughs> One of them being, I really have to check everything, like the instructions, the look at the pattern pieces, just have a really, really good analysis before I go and cut the fabric and actually choose the fabric. I usually do that. I'm very thorough before I sew. That's why it takes me longer than, than standard. I do have a process where I write things down, I measure things, I do a lot of things. But the fact that that cow neckline was cut on the straight of grain was a just an aspect that I didn't really notice. I assumed that it would be cut on the bias. When I was doing it and doing everything, I had already cut this wide neckline. You know, I could have adjusted it and just brought it in and made it be just a regular neckline without the cow, but I already cut up my fabric. So lots of things to learn there for me. <laughs> There's always learning when we make things that don't work out as, as, as planned. And it's also part of the pattern letting me down with that straight of grain cow neckline that on a woven, it was, it's always going to look terrible. On a knit, it's totally different. You can make cow necklines cut normally. They don't need to be on the bias. But for a woven, they do really need to be on the bias so it's, or else they just hang really awful. And I didn't even have any leftover from that navy bubble crepe to like do some sort of change or like just, I had absolutely nothing left. 
So I have been looking in the shops to see if I find the exact same fabric, which I doubt that I will ever find <laughs> because I had an idea of how I could fix that. But meanwhile, I have it there, it fits me. I really like everything else. If I find the right fabric, I will fix it and I will show you because I have an idea in my head of how I can fix it. But I just need the right fabric, the same fabric. I hope you enjoyed watching this one. I know there's not many practical things for you here. There's absolutely no sewing to see. But I had a lot of fun thinking this up and just sharing my thoughts. I also wonder if you rate your makes in any way, shape or form. How do you know which are your favorites? Is it because you just wore them a lot or because it was filling a gap in your wardrobe or because you just really needed that basic staple? You know, there's so many ways that we can sort of in our head rate how well a project went or anything like that. You know, I tend to be very moody and very, very light, very free in that way. I don't like to plan that much. I don't like to rationalize something that is just pure enjoyment for me. Um, I love sewing so much. I don't want to get too serious with it and rationalize and analyze too much, you know. That's why this one was based on a happiness scale that is subjective to my feelings. <laughs> and I wanted to share what the projects were from last year that made me the happiest. And just even thinking about them. So every time I see these items in my wardrobe, whether I'm wearing them or not, because it's just not appropriate because I'm stuck at home, or I do actually wear them for something around the house, it just brings me all that happiness back. I know I have a lot of happiness in that wardrobe. <laughs> Every little garment is a slice of happiness for me. And I wanted to share those with you. Let me know what you think about being happy when you sew. I hope we can keep this activity happy and not be too frustrated with things that we don't like. And just see the good in everything. See the good in the learning that we get when we make something that didn't turn out as well. Like that simplicity pattern I just mentioned. I will see you again very soon with another video. Bye and happy sewing.